Good morning and welcome to Beginning the Day with God on Tuesday the 9th of August. We opened with a piece of music by Keith Duke entitled In Nomine. O God our Creator, your kindness has brought us the gift of a new morning. Help us to leave yesterday and not to covet tomorrow, but to accept the uniqueness of today. By your love celebrated in your word, seen in your Son, brought near by your Spirit, take from us what we need to carry no longer, so that we may be free again to choose to serve you and to be served by each other. Amen. And now to today's reading and reflection. The reading continues our journey through the first book of Samuel. Today we reach chapter 15 and hear verses 1 to 23. Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Israel. Now therefore listen to the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did in opposing the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, child and infant, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. So Saul summoned the people and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 soldiers of Judah. Saul came to the city of the Amalekites and lay in wait in the valley. Saul said to the Kenites, Go, leave, withdraw from among the Amalekites, or I will destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites withdrew from the Amalekites. Saul defeated the Amalekites from Havilah as far as Shur, which is east of Egypt. He took King Agag of the Amalekites alive, but utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and of the cattle, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was valuable, and would not utterly destroy them. All that was despised and worthless they utterly destroyed. The word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me, and has not carried out my commands. Samuel was angry, and he cried out to the Lord all night. Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, and Samuel was told, Saul went to Carmel, where he set up a monument for himself, and on returning he passed on down to Gilgal. When Samuel came to Saul, Saul said to him, May you be blessed by the Lord. I have carried out the command of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears, and the lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Stop, I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. He replied, Speak. Samuel said, Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, 
and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. I have brought Agag the king of Amalek, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But from the spoil the people took sheep and cattle, the best of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Has the Lord has great delight in has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Surely to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is no less a sin than divination, and stubbornness is like iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Thanks be to God. And now to our reflection. You may be familiar with the term imposter syndrome, finding yourself in a context with a set of responsibilities that you feel you are unable to meet, and fearing everyone around you knows that you are pretending. In this situation, it is tempting for us to put on a show of strength, not realising we are fooling no one. It can be hard to take responsibility for our mistakes. Samuel doesn't have to activate his prophetic lie detector when he encounters Saul, as the noisy sheep give the lie away. Saul then blames the people, but Samuel is not buying it. Saul then claims the animals were for sacrifice for God, like the child caught with their hand in the biscuit tin, asking, Would you like a biscuit too? What of our old world? and world view do we need to leave behind? Which mementos are we tempted to keep, even if all they do is tie us to the past and remind us of former bullies, addictions, obsessions? It is easier to trust in what we can see instead of trusting the God we cannot. If we fear we are not enough, we can never have enough. Let us learn to see ourselves through the eyes of a loving God who says we are loved and we are enough. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>